Hi, everyone. Welcome to Forbes Newsroom. I am here with my colleague, Sarah Dorn, who covers national politics. You are unpacking for us this fight going on between Lauren Boebert and Marjorie Taylor Greene. What's happening? Thanks for having me, Diane. Um, yes, so as, as we've talked about previously, you know, Kevin McCarthy is vying for the speakership in January, and a conservative coalition of Republicans have waged a challenge to his speakership bid um, in the wake of Republicans gaining a slim majority in the House in the midterm election. Uh, this con this conservative coalition of Republicans has see viewed this as, you know, an opportunity to make demands against McCarthy, um, and they they put up a challenger to him as well, uh, Representative Andy Biggs from Arizona. Can you unpack this for us a little bit? Because I, I these are two women, to be honest, I often see the word firebrand next to their name. So um, even Marjorie Taylor Greene was just recently brought back to Twitter, am I correct? That's correct, yes. She's made a number of incendiary uh, comments uh, that, that got her kicked off. Um, similar commentary had her removed from her committee assignments last year. Bobert just narrowly won re-election in Colorado. Um, you know, if she, if she had lost, it would have been seen as yet another rebuke on Trump-backed MAGA candidates, which I think is very indicative of this, this fight that um, they're having that kind of extends to the House Freedom Caucus, which we can talk about in a second. I'll just tell you what happened okay. with Bobert and Green. So Lauren Bobert, when asked recently by Charlie Kirk, uh, what how she felt about Marjorie Taylor Green's support for Kevin McCarthy's speakership bid, she said that she disagreed with that, and she also disagreed with a number of, uh, of Green's other statements, including her suggestion that the Rothschild family somehow uh, was involved in executing a laser that started the 2018 California wildfires. This was a, you know, a conspiracy that she drew up on Facebook, and it became a number of controversial remarks that were highlighted in her removal from committee assignments by her fellow colleagues in the House. So Green, in seeing the statement, then attacked Boebert on Twitter, saying that she's had the support of Green, Trump, McCarthy in her reelection bid financially and, you know, through public statements. Um, and, and called her childish. So this was kind of a very incendiary spat and it's um, indicative of some divisions that are not only happening within the Republican Party itself, but within its conservative faction that has been known as the House Freedom Caucus. Let me step back one sec to the, the broader view here, because I know that you've also talked about um, you know, former President Trump's tax returns potentially now being available. How much of this particular division is really based on the fact that there is um, more uh, factionalism around support for Trump himself and the race? Absolutely. I mean, the midterm losses were viewed as sort of a rebuke on election denialism on the drama and this incendiary rhetoric, um, anti-Semitism that Trump has drawn out and you know, allowed a lot of lawmakers to be elected on that platform. And as I said, Boebert nearly lost her race in Colorado and that would have been seen as another example of that. And so this conservative faction is, is trying to get back to rather than incendiary rhetorical commentary, things that, you know, may make a splash um, into doing real legislative work and contesting Biden's agenda, things that actually make a difference. Any sense as to whether um, McCarthy's likely to be speaker? What's the momentum right now? Yes, um, you know, there, there is a challenger, Representative Andy Biggs, who is aligned with the House Freedom Caucus, but one of the two candidates needs 218 votes to win the, the speakership. And even if it goes to multiple ballots, which is looking like it, it 
may very well happen. The first person to get to 218 votes wins. So as of now, McCarthy does not have the votes. Republicans just have a slim you know, four seat majority. And there are currently five Republicans who are contesting his speakership bid. So he may not get the votes in the first round, but it's very unlikely that they rally behind Andy Biggs. I mean, there's this other far flung proposal that Democrats could support a more moderate Republican pick for speaker, but no one has been put forth as of yet. And the the clock is running out and Congress has a lot to do before they break for the holiday. And then they return on January 3rd. And that's when the speaker vote will be held. So we talk about a house divide, but clearly we're talking about a party divided here too at this point. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you.